please give a warm welcome to Clayton Harvey and the People's Farm. Hello, greetings. My name is Clayton Harvey. I am representing Indabakia, the People's Farm, where we are working very hard at um, restoring personal and cultural health among the White Mountain Apache tribe through agriculture. Well, um, so who we are, uh, we are a tribe of 18,000 tribal members nestled in Eastern Arizona with uh, about 15,000 people living on the reservation where we have one grocery store that accommodates to everyone's needs. My people have created this amazing food system that has sustained them since the time of our creation. But due to things like historic trauma and climate change, this way of life has become a very, very slowly dying art. And we are also, and because of that, we are also seeing a rise in chronic um, diet re health related diseases. Next. So, what we do, so in Debekia, the People's Farm recognizes that historic trauma has and continues to affect our identity as Apache people. Therefore, the farm has begun several community-based initiatives where tribal members of all ages have access to fresh quality produce and at the same time sharing ancestral knowledge in hopes of fostering and growing young Apache farmers through programming like farming, farmer educational classes, hosting annual events like the Apache Harvest Festival, and um, renting and operating uh, the Young Apache Farmers Apprenticeship. Uh, this is our first year in doing so and we're very excited to, to be doing this. Next. So, Prior to Ndebikiya's current site, the farm was originally a, a hay farm created in the 1980s and then later closed and sat in idle for several decades until uh, 2010, uh, which um, was a response from the community for fresh quality produce, fresh quality Apache grown produce. Um, we are currently growing on eight acres, but we have the potential to grow up to 960 acres. Okay, next. Next. So there are very, very great, there are a lot of great things happening here at Endeg Pia, the People's Farm. However, there are several barriers that hinder the opportunity to expand and the major factor being climate change. Our traditional ways of growing and irrigating have really, really shifted and at times do not work for us. Because of the lack of sufficient, sufficient precipitation and uh, always fluctuating temperatures in Arizona, um, a lot of our ancient heirloom seeds that were once used for dry farming are slowly vanishing. We see the need to share this ageless wisdom with our, our younger people. And so we want to hire and train young Apache farmers and also growing drought resilient seeds and creating and implementing um, sustainable soil practices like growing cover crops and um, composting. Next. So the different, the, the Dabikia definitely has the opportunity to expand and grow into the full 200, uh, 960 acres that will easily accommodate um, our people's needs when it comes to Apache growing produce. However, we really need your help. Next. We have one well that feeds our eight acres of farmland and having one well only adds to the limitation for growth and expansion. And we really, really need your help um, in, in installing a, a drought resilient um, a rainwater catch system that will not only accommodate the needs of today, but a system that will 
help us to expand into the 960 acres within the near future. I'm done with my presentation and I, I thank you for the opportunity and I am ready for any questions if there are any. Thanks Clayton for uh, sharing uh, what you're working on. It's beautiful to see. Um, I'm curious uh, to understand from you, uh, and I asked this in another breakout, uh, what are you looking for an investor uh, in the way of values or expertise? Well, in the way of values and expertise, uh, so many times when, when investors or grantors or foundations come to our communities, um, most times they're pushing what they believe, what they want, rather than what our needs are and what we want. And so when an investor comes to our community, we want them to be opened and we want them to, to realize that there is a need besides what they see. And um, it all comes from educating and making our investors more aware of what's happening at the farm. Thank you. Hi, hey Clayton. Um, thanks for the presentation. I love the mission of feeding and educating the community. Um, I guess given the mission, you know, foundations kind of come right to mind as, as a potential funding source. Um, but just for the folks on, on this call, are you organized as a, a nonprofit or a for-profit? And the reason I ask is just tax, you know, tax implications. Well, so, yeah, so that, that's, that's always the question that, that we get, you know, is our farm a nonprofit or is it for profit? So currently um, we operate as a, a nonprofit organization. We are under the, um, the, the, tribe, the tribe's blanket, so the umbrella. So therefore the tribe, uh, according to the IRS, is a nonprofit agency. So uh, we are nonprofit. Thank you for that wonderful presentation, Clayton. Thank you, Investor Feedback Panel, for all the great feedback.